Hi, my name is Don Steele. I'm the vice president of Softgel. And this is our R&D lab that you probably can see part of it anyway. I spend a lot of time in this R&D lab because I do a lot of work on new formulas and I do a lot of work on uh, production activities and production processes as well. Uh, I've been working in the uh, soft gel industry and soft gels are uh, gelatin, soft gelatin capsules. You're familiar with fish oils and things like that. That's what a soft gel is. I've been working in the soft gel industry for about 30 years. Prior to that, I was in uh, the pharmaceutical industry for about 20 years. So I've got a lot of experience working with these, uh, these types of products. In addition to that, I have two degrees, one in biology and one in chemistry that helps me out to develop these products. One of the, the reasons that I like soft gels is because when I was in the fifth grade, just a little, I went to uh, the cafeteria one day and they were passing out soft gels and I thought they were so nice, so cool looking. I said, well, I'd like to work with these things some, uh, someday. They reminded me somewhat of frog eggs. The, <laughs> the soft gels they gave us were uh, uh, cod liver oil because at that time they felt like kids needed some vitamin A, vitamin D, so they gave us cod liver oil supplements and at that time soft gels were so new we had to keep them in the refrigerator to keep them fresh. But anyway, I won't spend a lot of time talking about that. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you today about is a, a product that we're really proud of. It's a fantastic product and it's known as Cubest. These are two brochures. One, one brochure just explains the Cubest. The other one explains a lot of the testing and a lot of the clinical work that was done on the formula. But before I get that far, I'll go on into uh, CoQ10. Uh, CoQ10, in case you're not aware of what it is, it's a common name is Co coenzyme Q10. Another name for it is ubiquinone or ubiquinol. Ubiquinone is the oxidized form of CoQ10. And CoQ10, because they call it ubiquinone because it comes from the word ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Ubiquitous means that it's everywhere. It's in every cell in the body. And ubiquinone and ubiquinol, the oxidized and the reduced form of CoQ10, is, is found everywhere in the body as well because the body can convert it back and forth at will whenever it needs to. And I like to consider CoQ10 like the water boy in the body because it helps with energy. It's part of the energy process. So it helps by transferring electrons in the energy process. So it's, I call it the water boy because without it, you can't have the energy process take place. Uh, but as long as you've got a good supply of CoQ10, then you've got a good supply of energy to do whatever work you need to, to do. CoQ10 has been around for quite a while. It was discovered, I think, in the late 30s by a Dr. Carl Folkers, and his work led to the development of large quantities of it, because you can get it in your food, but you can't get that much from food. So they started developing ways to manufacture CoQ10. Most of the CoQ10 nowadays is made either in China or in Japan. And most of the CoQ10 either comes from a fermenting process using bacteria or using yeast. It can also be made from a chemical that's found in tobacco, which is called selenosol, but not many people use that process. Today we buy most of our CoQ10 from China and we buy some from Japan as well. Just to give you an idea of what CoQ10 looks like from this fermenting process, it's a powder. It's an orange powder like, like this. I don't know if you can see that this is a powder in here, but it is. And because it's a powder, it's in a crystal form. These are needle-like crystals in here. And when you, if you take the powder, then your body can't really absorb it because the body can't absorb crystals. So 
that's part of the problem with the absorption of CoQ10 and the body can't absorb crystals so if you take the normal type of CoQ10 which is the normal type of CoQ10 might look like this which is orange colored you can tell that it's still got the powder in it so when you have it like this you get less than two percent absorption in the body so if you take a dose you only get two percent of it is available to work in your body and before I guess into the absorption too much I'd like to state that the body makes CoQ10 and since the body makes CoQ10 then it has a pretty good supply normally but some people need supplementation and supplementation uh, helps out with athletes supplementation helps out with heart patients and lots of different uh, reasons why people take CoQ10 if you're on statin drugs, for example, then the body's normal manufacturing process for making CoQ10 is not shut down completely, but it doesn't work as well. So you don't get as much CoQ10 as you need to have. So a lot of times, if you see commercials on TV, you'll see that they recommend that you take CoQ10 if you're on statin drugs. And a lot of people are on statin drugs because statin drugs helps to lower cholesterol in the body. And cholesterol, of course, has got a bad name, especially the LDL type cholesterol, the low density cholesterol. Uh, the body manufactures CoQ10 in the liver. The supplementation of CoQ10, though, is normally uh, oral supplementation where you take the soft gels or you take a two-piece hard shell and it goes through the small intestines. That's where it's absorbed if you take the supplement and then it goes into the lymph system and from there into the bloodstream for as far as the uses for coq10 like i said people help supplement because they're on statin drugs in addition to that a lot of heart patients take it and doctors if the cardiac surgeons for example they may put you on coq10 as before you go into surgery just to build up the supply of coq10 in your heart your heart has a, a high concentration of coq10 and people who have suffered from heart attacks usually their coq10 levels are lower than they should be so the doctor may supplement you with coq10 prior to surgery also it, heart patients in, in general or people that have heart failure maybe they need to be taking CoQ10 as well as I mentioned it's very poorly absorbed so this was one of the challenges for me when I was working with CoQ10 I've been working for with CoQ10 for probably 20 years uh, originally I started out making soft gels like this where the CoQ10 was in a powder form then I developed a product about 20 years ago that had, instead of 2% absorption, it went up to 4% absorption. And everybody was thrilled. They said, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, okay? And so we started selling that product. And I thought to myself, well, you know, you made that one and it didn't take you too long to figure out how to do that. So maybe you can do better. So that's when I started working on it in 2002, I, when I first started at uh, Best Formulations, I started working on a new product. And I had tried everything to be able to try to solubilize CoQ10, because the key to making a better absorbed CoQ10 product was going to be keeping it in solution, having it dissolved so you wouldn't have the crystals, so the body didn't have to deal with crystals. It, it dealt with the single molecule that was solubilized in some carrier material. This carrier, carrier material just came to me by accident, but we were working with somebody who was selling us an oil that was being used for weight loss. And this oil happened to be uh, conjugated linoleic acid. And I said, I looked at it and I said, you know, due to the characteristics of this CLA, we call it, then I think maybe this would be a good solvent for CoQ10. So I started playing with this solvent 
Okay. Lo and behold, it was able to solubilize CoQ10 and keep it in a crystal free form. So from there, I knew I had a good product. And at the same time, I was working with a doctor by the name of Dr. Judy. And Dr. Judy is pretty well known as far as CoQ10 is concerned and as far as his laboratory work and he also does clinical trials. So I said let's put the, together a formula, let's do a clinical trial on it and let's see what it does. So we did and during the clinical trial the concentration of CoQ10 that was absorbed went from 2% up to close to 10%. It was about 8% on average. But we had one of the clinical trial patients whose CoQ10 went up by 10%. So we knew we had a really good product. And since we had this product, we wanted to get it patented. And we went after a patent and the patent was uh, awarded. The patent also contains the full clinical trial that we did on the product, which uh, was published and peer-reviewed. And from that point on, we've been selling the QBEST, that's the name that we gave it. We've been selling the QBEST product because of its high absorption levels. Now this is an example of what QBEST looks like. These are crystal clear soft gels. You can see through them. It looks like, well, it might look like flaxseed oil or something like that, a clear oil. But in reality, there, each one of these soft gels has 50 milligrams of CoQ10 dissolved in CLA conjugated linoleic acid. In addition to that, it has flaxseed oil in it. Flaxseed oil is a really good supplement to take as well. And it also has a surfactant. Now, the surfactant helps with the absorption in the small intestines. The, the surfactant we use, it comes from, uh, from soybeans, but it's basically a free fatty acid that helps in the soluble, uh, the absorption, I should say, of the CoQ10 molecule in the small intestines. Since we were able to do this, Dr. Judy has done quite a bit of work with CoQ10 as well, and he's really thrilled about the product, and he's working with it in addition to the work that I'm doing. One of the things that he does which is very interesting, is he gives this product to uh, children, usually little kids that their bodies can't manufacture CoQ10. There's only a small number of people born that way in the world, but people who have this disease where their bodies can't manufacture CoQ10, if they don't get supplementation, then they die. And this form of CoQ10, to my knowledge, is the only CoQ10 that's being given to those children today. And it helps them to stay alive and it helps them to stay healthy. Now I've talked about the advantages and the fact that you can get up to 8% absorption. So I was thinking along those lines, it's good to have a, a higher level of CoQ10 in the body because it gives you more energy. We gave this product to athletes, for example, and they were able to perform better. One year we gave it to the decathlon winner uh, in the Olympics. Now it was a different formula from this, but he won the decathlon in the Olympics and he was taking this supplement. So it definitely helps you with energy as far as that's concerned and a sports person would be well advised to take it. Now there's another reason for taking this one for sports and that's because of the CLA. CLA is another patented material that helps to build lean body mass and lean body mass is muscle. In addition to CoQ10, you have the advantage of something that helps you to build lean body mass. One of my favorite stories is a story about a little baby that we know, and it's friends of ours from Westlake Village, California. They had a baby, and the baby had a defective heart, so it needed to have a heart transplant but they were worried that it wouldn't be able to survive long enough to get a new heart. So they took the baby to Boston Children's Hospital and the baby was in, of course, whatever they have for intensive care for little babies. But 
we sent the information about this QBEST formula to the doctor that was uh, in charge of this baby. And we told him this may help the baby to survive until it can get a new heart for a heart transplant. So the doctor looked at the formula, he looked at all the advantages that we listed for the formula, and he decided that he would be able to uh, use this product in the hospital and give it to the baby through the baby's feeding tube because the baby wasn't old enough to really be able to, to eat solid foods. So for a year period of time, this was the only compound, by the way, that this hospital would allow to come in to be given to their patients. So he gave it to this baby and it took about a year before the baby was able to get a heart available for the heart transplant. The baby got the heart transplant and the baby is surviving today because of this.